Hello, all you beautiful people out there. I'm Tom. And I'm Savannah. And come wake up with us this morning as we serve you the morning tea. If you haven't joined us so far, The Morning Tea is a student-run show that takes an entertaining, modern, and real-world look at the world through the eyes of students like you. Yeah, so make sure to follow us on our social media at The Morning TAU. You can see our behind-the-scenes on our Instagram, which is a pretty lit Instagram. It's so much fun. Yeah, if you want to see some cool stuff, follow us on there. And uh, also, our little line this week, if you're feeling a little ordinary, as usual, come wake up with us and we can make you feel a little bit more extraordinary. Yeah, today's show is going to cover all the latest news. We've got a story on veganism, some important information on the upcoming election, some goss, what's on, and some really fun games at the end that you guys are going to love. Dang straight. But let's get started <laughs> off with the news. So let's take us across to Shaz. Shaz, you want to give us the news this morning? Certainly. Thank you, Tom. And starting off with the weather forecast for today, it will be cloudy throughout with a slight chance of rain expected in the morning. The temperature will be at a low of 12 degrees and a maximum of 17. With only three days to go until the federal elections, leaders from all major parties are levelling up their game as we speak. Prime Minister Scott Morrison launched his campaign on Mother's Day, making a last-minute appeal to younger voters by lowering the deposit from the required 20% to just 5%. Mr Morrison said that this has been put together over the past four weeks during his election campaign in spite of a revelation that his cabinet wasn't consulted prior to the announcement. He also pledged $53 million for perinatal care, of which $36 million would be diverted to parents struggling with pre- and postnatal depression. The major parties are divided on income tax cuts, franking credits and negative gearing. In its stunt demanding for action on climate change, 15 Greenpeace activists took on protesting on the Sydney Harbour Bridge yesterday morning. Activists aged 21 and uh, 21 through to 70, I should say, were arrested on the walkway while three managed to get under the structure and three abseiled from the bridge. All 15 were charged with safety risks, preventing passage of a person and climbing and entering any part of the bridge without lawful consent. In a case of a mistaken identity, Nick Dimopoulos found himself wrongfully arrested and seriously injured when police raided his apartment looking for an armed member of a Lebanese gang on Saturday morning. A male fitting a description given to members was what led police to Dimopoulos' apartment, who is now having surgery for fractures on his arm as a result of the wrongful arrest. Renowned for being a pioneer of Melbourne's gay dance party scene, Dimopoulos initially feared this to be a hate crime, but was later satisfied that there were no elements of homophobia, but raised concerns about racial profiling. Assistant Commissioner Lou Cornelius admitted to the stuff-up at the LGBTI bookshop Hares and Hyenas in Fitzroy, which is attached to the apartment, and has personally visited the shop to apologise to the victim's housemates. The investigation is ongoing. James Charles has lost 2.6 million YouTube followers after a publicised fallout with former mentor Tati Westbrook. The 19-year-old YouTube star claimed the title as the first male ambassador for CoverGirl in 2016. The feud started when Charles posted a video on Instagram of Sugar Bear Hair, a gummy vitamin brand while at Coachella, which is a direct competitor to Westbrook's own supplement brand, Halo, Halo Beauty. rather. Westbrook responded with her own video in which she felt lost and betrayed by someone but didn't mention names, to which Charles posted a statement apologising to his close friend Tati on his Instagram story. While Charles has made some public faux pas on social media, this has by far been the most publicised and has cost him a considerable amount of followers, where Westbrook's following is on the rise. And in entertainment, a groundbreaking 17.4 million people watched the penultimate episode of the final season of Game of Thrones, according to HBO. This is just over a million views, uh, viewers from the previous season and has become an all-time TV blockbuster at a time when there's immense competition from streaming services and social media. Fans are abuzz with reactions to a shocking episode that loses some big names in the lead-up to the final episode of All Time next week. While some fans found this episode absolutely glorious, it has also been rated as having the lowest Rotten Tomatoes score in the history of all seasons. And that's a wrap for the news today. Mm -hmm. Thank you Mixed so bag. much. No that problem. Awesome. Thanks, Shaz. Uh, do you want to go into first talking about Hez and Hyenas? 
I think. Yeah. Yeah. Did you hear what happened? No, I didn't. This is so horrible. You know, I performed there. No, I didn't. Yeah, my first ever drag show I did, and I went there and I like did this big thing, and I actually met those guys. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah, and like all the people I've met in that whole drag community, we all like everyone's sort of been there. Yeah. It's like yeah. the hub. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Of sort of. And I guess that, that's what it is, because it's so well known, you know, and the shock of obviously, you know, someone so well known being misidentified, you know, it's yeah. just really shocking. It's, and, and I think they were very quick to apologise as well, because they realised well, very quickly, so. exactly. Yeah. Imagine if they know. came in here. Imagine if they were like, <laughs> oh, there's like, there's a place in the Agora that they're dealing drugs and they come in here and they like break my arm or your <laughs> arm, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, exactly right. I mean, you'd expect something like that, you know, to obviously be a little bit more confined, especially a raid. To you'd be hope yeah, a raid would be a bit more ensure... because like, raids are so dangerous like if it was a real raid and they had guns you'd hope you'd be have more planning yeah you know? yeah so. yeah i feel I like mean, if they were going to go in and raid they should have known a little bit more about you know who it was you know and something so well known as a hub like tom right. said as well you know it's well known and the people are well known i think even one of his roommates is a well-known Play writer, or he's a, he's some sort of a poet or artist. Yeah, they're all yeah. they're all different forms all, of yeah. artists, and yeah. like they're just like really lovely people. I met I actually went oh. and filmed there last week, and yeah, like they were just really lovely, and you just wouldn't ever confuse them to be. <laughs> Like uh, yeah, oh, the polar criminals. opposite of you know description of what they're looking for. Yeah. So yeah, that'll be interesting to see what comes out of it and what actually made them go into it. So oh, yeah. Well. Anyway, though, Game of Thrones is <sighs> also very scandalous. This <laughs> Did you guys watch it? Yeah. Yes. I yes. actually watched it. Okay, so I haven't oh, seen any of the you. previous seasons of Game of Thrones. Oh, I've been watching you, it. Can't, <laughs> you can't have an opinion if you haven't I seen know, it. I know, but I feel like it's been easier to catch on than I thought it would be. And, like, it's been a pretty good season. No, <laughs> I, no, no, this... But I agree that the more recent ones, because there's a lot more kind of happening, whereas, you know, the last seasons were sort mm -hmm. of a lead up to it. Yeah. But this one was a shocker. Good. Well, I thought it was really mixed, good. It was really greatly done, but I think because the I was cinematography doing the news, was oh, that, so good. That At the end, was, when the horse comes yeah. in, oh are you my kidding gosh. me? <laughs> I loved it. Are you kidding me? All of the seasons of build up and of like character tension, like oh, what's going to happen with oh, this okay. person? Okay, I have person? heard that a yeah. lot. The, that, the character development just kind of went down the yeah. drain. Because like that's what Game of Thrones was so good. It wasn't like Lord of the Rings. It was like just really fun to watch people like talk. You yeah. know? Yeah, that's right. Conversation. Now, yeah. And what's his name? Cersei's it. brother, but the tall one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, oh, Jamie. yeah. You, Jamie, I didn't yeah. expect him to just go back like that. Well, that his, was the, the true. Thing is yes. His journey has been that he was evil, and then he like lost he his good. arm, and he got, <laughs> now he's you've, you've gone through this journey, and now he's back right uh, back. Uh, then they, then they die on their way to the crypt. It's like, <laughs> yeah, um, did they die that. though? That's, mm. They're dead. They're dead. If they aren't, if they aren't know. dead, I'll hate the show. <laughs> they need to be dead now. Anyway, we can't. We can't look. Let's talk about the actual real life Game of Thrones, the <laughs> freaking Australian election. All right, we have a little package, a little video to to show everyone. So let's go to that. You may have heard that Australia has a federal election coming up. On Saturday the 18th of May, Australia will go to the polls to elect a new House of Representatives and half a Senate, effectively deciding who the government will be for the next three years. Voting is compulsory, so if you haven't enrolled yet, it's too late. If you don't have a valid reason for not voting, you'll have to pay the fine. But what if it's your first time? Or you just have no idea what you're doing? Here at The Morning Tea, we want to give you a crash course on how it all works. This is Bridget. She's enrolled to vote, but she doesn't know what to do next. Who do I vote for? Where do I go? What do I do when I get there? First, you need to figure out which electoral division you're in. Head to the AEC website, pop your details in, and you'll see your electorate. Then you just need to find a polling station near you. But I can't vote on an empty stomach. Well, wrap your laughing gear around this. DemocracySausage.org has a comprehensive database of polling stations and the food they have on offer from sausages, sweets and coffee, to vegan and halal options. Cool. I found one. All right, let's go. Well, it's the 18th of May and we've made it to the polling station. Let's vote. Here you go. Seriously, I already have enough paper. These two pieces on top are the only ones that matter. Let's start with the green one first. This is the ballot paper for the House of Representatives. Here, you vote one for your favourite candidate, two for your second favourite, and so on until you've numbered every box. Where's Bill Shorten? Where's Scott Morrison? Where's Harold Holt? Unless you're in the same part of the country as the party leaders, you won't be directly voting for them. The party that wins a majority of seats becomes the government, and the leader of that party becomes the Prime Minister. A 
will probably just be Labor or Liberal. Why do I have to put a number next to every other candidate? Aha! A candidate needs more than 50% of the vote to win. Basically, if nobody has the majority after the first count, the loser is eliminated and their two votes are counted for everyone else. This keeps going until someone wins. And there's nothing stopping a minor candidate from winning. Yeah, that's true, I guess. So, what's this one for? That's the Senate. The what? You don't hear about it as much because there's no ministers there, but the Senate is still a powerful part of the government. Here, you vote for multiple senators to represent the whole state or territory. Are you telling me I have to put numbers in all of these boxes? Not this time. Oh, thank God. But you can if you want. <sighs> no thanks. You only need to number your first six preferences if you're voting for parties. If you want to get specific and vote for individual candidates, you need to number at least 12. Great. So who should I vote for? Mm -hmm. Your vote is your decision, and it's an important one. Please take a bit of time to research your candidates in both houses, so when the time comes to have your say on election day, you can be sure that your vote reflects how you think and feel, because that's what democracy is all about. Enjoy your sausage. You've earned it. Well, that was awesome. Yeah. I personally really enjoyed learning so much about you guys' election process. Like, I just can't believe you guys are, like, it's compulsory voting here. Yep. So it's, like, really, really important. Like, you yep. have to know exactly where to go. Like, and if you don't, you literally get fined. You get fined, but you can donkey vote. What does that mean? Donkey vote means you write something wrong. So you could write, literally put, like, number 13 and, like, just put random numbers or mm -hmm. just scribble on the whole paper. Chuck it and in. that counts? Yeah, because it's not, you know, you don't get... You don't vote with your name. Yeah. You know? mm. So interesting. It's anonymous, but you know that's probably gotten less over the years. I think now that it's important to vote. Is voting complicated for you guys? Like we don't have preferential voting either. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's pretty straightforward in the sense that once um, based on such a good video, let's just mm -hmm. give you know mm. match credit yeah, to definitely. it. Yeah, definitely. That explains the fact. <laughs> that's exactly right. So it's it's once you register, you just pretty much, uh, from what I've my perspective, you just walk in and pretty much give your name. You don't even have to give ID, and then they just get your name and then you vote. Wow. So I've always sort of been skeptical. At how do you yeah. know it's me? But then they said, well, you know, you wouldn't want to pretend to be someone else. So you pretty much go. That's a big thing yeah. in the United States is voter ID and making mm. sure that the person voting is actually so the person. Mm. Remember that when he won the election? He's like, no, I, think I would have had more votes, but people are fake voting <laughs> yeah. or whatever. Of so, course. Of yeah. course. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, so it. It literally takes like no more than 20, 30 seconds. I mean, you mm. take your you know ballot paper, which is quite large, as, mm. as you saw, and then take it and then just sort of vote above the line or below, and then you just fold and that's get to go. Senate. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's interesting. I think it's probably better than the electoral college. College. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, because mm. you get more of like a um, you're actually counting everyone's vote by their vote, not by mm. like their electorate. Yeah, know? definitely. Um, yeah. I like that system. It seems a little bit more complicated, and you kind of have to wrap your mind around it. And it's you know a lot of numbers, and it's not just like ticking two things mm. off. But I really like the system. I think it works really well for you yeah. guys. There are some workarounts in like the House representatives and like Senate. Sometimes the seats, like you can, there's some like. Some parties will, like, have partnerships and some backdoor mm. deals, but mm. that's just politics. That's standard. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, I heard you did a really cool story this week. I did. As you, none of you know, I'm vegan. <laughs> um, I don't think I'm for anyone. But, um, yeah, so I made a little, a little video on, you know, veganism. So enjoy. Hello, my favorite people in the world. My name is Tom, and I'm here doing a little video about veganism. Let's go. Over the past few years, veganism has exploded amongst the community. There have been protests throughout Melbourne and through all over the world, and people are calling veganism a huge solution to some of the world's biggest problems. Stuff like healthcare, heart disease, and even climate change have been brought up in this topic. If you're planning on going vegan, there are many supportive pages on YouTube that can help you in your transition with a diet. Whether you're a vegan bodybuilder, or just someone looking to maybe shed a few kilos, me and the girls this week went to Smith & Deli to check out some non-homemade vegan meals. In other words, some vegan comfort food. At this store, you can buy things like vegan chocolate, vegan marshmallows, vegan donuts, vegan like literally anything. One time I had this vegan smoked salmon cream cheese bagel that was like out of this world. It's magic. I don't know how they do it. Man, they make a good meal. Me and Bridget got an egg and bacon roll, which tasted pretty damn amazing. 
I don't know how they did it, but that egg and bacon roll literally tasted like real bacon and real eggs. It was amazing. And their chocolate mousse filled donut was definitely the star of the morning. It tasted so good. It had this sweetness, subtleness. It was so soft in the mouth and creamy all through. You just wish you could eat it. And then suddenly you remember, that is vegan. Me and my roommates are all vegan now. We don't find any difficulty in what to make to eat. To make this super delicious and totally easy recipe, the first step, cut up all your delicious vegetables, except your cauliflower. Step two, put them all in a bowl together and chuck in the vegetable stock. Step three, put on a medium to high heat and let it simmer. Step five, mix together your herbs. And step six, drizzle that stuff all over your cauliflower and get ready to bake that stuff in a preheated oven at 180 degrees. While these two absolutely delicious concoctions are cooking, make sure you wash your rice and prepare it inside of your rice cooker. Now that it's done, you can just arrange it on a plate in any way you like and enjoy a delicious vegan and healthy meal. So if you're ever thinking about going vegan, maybe give it a try. Go to one of these places and taste some of the food that you could potentially be eating. My name's Tom Kettle. Over and out. Yum! Oh my gosh, I'm so hungry now. That I looked know. so good. I should have brought a donut. You uh, should have. Well, you should have come to have vegan oh, food. Oh, I know. It was a little early in the morning. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> like really very, very early. But it was so delicious. Did yeah, you see that bacon? Look, yes, it looked so good. It looked like bacon. That's it so crazy. Literally had that like chewy texture where some part of it was one texture, other mm-hmm. part was another texture, and it like. It was actually weird because I haven't had egg in like two years. Yeah. So I had a vegan egg that tasted exactly like egg. And I was like, yeah, and I was like, do I even like this? How do they even make that stuff? Like, I just imagine people like um, experimenting, like trying to create things that taste like (laughs) pineapple number X or whatever. (laughs) You pour it in. And you get things that actually taste like meat that aren't really meat. (laughs) Yeah. And that's the weird thing. Like as a vegan who doesn't eat meat and hasn't like doesn't on the regular have meat products that are like what do you call it, like substitute meat products? Mm-hmm. You have the meat products and you're like, do I like this anymore? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I don't know. It's, it's strange. Um, but it was definitely a really friggin' yeah, fun experience. Yeah, that sounds really good. And even the um, stuff you created, the curry afterwards, sounds so good. Oh, yeah. My roommate, she's from Bangladesh, and she always just brings me, like, the most amazing recipes. Like, um, she's awesome. She does, like, all different curries. And, like, um, last night she made this, like, Alfredo... Um, pasta sauce with like peanuts and cashews. Ooh, that sounds so good. Yeah, it's my uh, roommate's it's vegan too, and she makes the best stuff. Like honestly, she's a way better cook than I am. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> you kind of have to be sometimes. Yeah, I have to get them. a little creative. You do, you do, because you know only so many times you can have potato. Yeah, for real. <laughs> I mean, there is a lot of times like, <laughs> you have it a lot, but sometimes you don't feel like boiled potato. Uh huh. Well, speaking of things that yeah. I don't know as much about, our next segment is our favorite segment, which is Sport with Matt. Welcome back, everyone, and welcome, Matt, to the studio. Good morning, guys. How are we doing today? We're great. How are you? I'm very good. Shall we get started? Yes, Let's absolutely. Started. Alrighty. So, round eight of the AFL got underway on Friday with a knife-edge five-point win for Sydney over Essendon. But the spectacle was upstaged the next day when Melbourne kicked a single point with one second to go to steal the win away from Gold Coast. Adelaide won the 46th edition of the showdown by 20 points at Adelaide Oval, with the Cats, Hawks and Tigers also taking wins. Geelong currently had the ladder by four points over Collingwood, who won a tense battle against the Blues. In soccer, the A-League Grand Final is set after Perth Glory and Sydney FC won their semi-finals in separately extraordinary ways. Perth tied Adelaide after extra time, leading to a penalty shootout which the Glory won after eight shots apiece. However, Melbourne victory didn't get nearly as close, suffering a 6-1 defeat against Sydney. The big dance kicks off at 6.30 on Sunday night. To England now, and Manchester City have won the Premier League by a single point after a victory over Brighton on Monday. Liverpool also took home the three points against Wolves, but it wasn't enough to get them the trophy. 
The European Champions League is their last chance to finish this season with some silverware, and they'll take on London club Tottenham as they chase their first ever European Championship. The Europa League final is also set to be a showdown between Chelsea and Arsenal, making it the first time ever that all four European finalists have been English clubs. Back home to the NRL now, which hosted the first ever Magic Round over the weekend, with every single match taking place at Brisbane's Suncorp Stadium. The Sharks, Tigers and Broncos took wins in the first two days. Saturday saw wins for Newcastle and New Zealand before Melbourne Storm registered one of the biggest wins in recent memory with a 54-point thrashing of Parramatta. The Roosters and Rabbitohs remain first and second after winning their Sunday matches. And in Formula One, Lewis Hamilton has extended his championship lead by heading home another Mercedes 1-2 at Barcelona. Aussie driver Daniel Ricciardo finished outside the points. So, you guys been very sporty this weekend? Oh, I can't say that I have, no. Matt. <laughs> no, I have not. What have you been keeping up the most? Like, what is your, like, top game that you followed this week? Um, the top thing I followed this week was probably the A-League semifinals because I was watching the um, the Adelaide versus Perth semifinal at home and I forgot it was on until extra time was halfway through and I'd order a pizza and I was like, oh, no, I hope this doesn't arrive at a terrible time. Oh, no. So that was good. I was but The penalty shootout went for so long, I was able to eat almost the whole pizza while the thing was happening. So, yeah, it worked out pretty well. Goals. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Matt, for being a fantastic sportsman. Any time. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, but now we're going into the weekly What is On? It's autumn, the perfect time to head down to the Winter Village at Federation Square's car park. The main attraction is the outdoor ice skating ring. If you have never ice skated before, don't worry. There are seal skate supports and medical assistance close by. If sitting down is more your thing, there is a mega igloo with snow and private igloos where you can eat, drink and listen to the DJ in comfort. Now, people, go and have some fun. That's so cool looking. How have I not heard of this? I, li- I don't know. I haven't heard of it either. That's so cool looking. Like, when is that going to be? Did you, did you hear th- it's it? It's on now. That's so cool. Yeah, you're going to make bookings. Oh, my God. I want to, like, have a party there. Yeah, like you could definitely. have a fill one of those things with like a lot of alcohol, a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a lot of fun, my gosh. Well, anyways, we have Bridget here Hello. with us again today. We Thanks had so much fun again. with you last week that oh, we wanted so to have good. you on again. Oh, well, because we had so much fun playing our games, I thought may as well do another one. Exactly. It'd be rude not yeah. to. <laughs> be rude. So, to what I've got today is, you know how our celebrities do the craziest things on social media? They post crazy photos, crazy captions, always starting controversy. Uh-huh. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a few tweets or Instagram posts. You have to tell me who wrote that. Ooh, okay. You're going to be so much better at this. <laughs> yep. I'm All right, ready. So, we'll start off easy ready. today. Okay. So, our first post is captioned, not getting up off the couch this year, but still trying to represent hashtag Met Gala, hashtag Met Gala 2012. So it might be a bit easier because we've got a photo. You could see on the socks who they were. Was it Taylor Swift? No, it was K- Kristen Bell and her husband Dax. Oh, on the show. Uh, who the hell even is she cute. anymore? <laughs> True. You know who she <laughs> is. I know, but I didn't think of. Ah, uh, it's Kristen Bell. You know, that's the first blonde person I had on a sock that I could think of. Very cool, very cool. Okay, Kristen maybe Bell. you might get this one. The next one is he's here and he's perfect. Who wrote this? He's here and he's... Per- oh, Kim oh. Kardashian. Yes. Yeah. Easy. Yeah, I wouldn't have guessed that. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, royal baby. I'm like, no, no. I oh, know. Who cares about that thing? All right. Yeah. So <laughs> the next one goes, truly love this out of this cast. Buckle up, world, because this movie is bigger and better. Hashtag Jumanji. Oh, it's The Rock. No? <laughs> mm-hmm. Is it? No? No? Who else um, is in it? I don't Come think on, I know anyone in that movie. I'm so bad oh, at Oh, Kevin this. Hart. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kevin oh. Hart. Kevin Hart, yeah. I wouldn't guess that. That's a sexy movie. <laughs> no, I'm so excited. It'll be a great movie. It'll be really Wait, good. Jum- it's already out. No, the second Jumanji. There's a second one. Yeah, that's what I he's didn't talking even about. Know. There's a sequel. <laughs> It'll be great. I anyway. just want to watch the first one, the real one. Oh, the real one is like classic. Is great. Yeah, yeah, but I reckon they've done a good job. Yeah. yeah. Next Not one junior, is yeah. No Dream is Too Big. Keep Chasing. Trust me, I'm a doctor. But for real, thank you to Berkeley College for this incredible honour. I'm very humbled and grateful. 
Well, it's not Who? Kim Kardashian yet. No, not <laughs> yeah. yet. yet. Who oh, has become know. a doctor? Who's I become don't... a doctor? I don't know. No. Someone boring. I doctor. really don't know. Doctor in music. Here's a hint. A oh, doctor in music. No, no, Justin Timberlake. <gasps> Yes. What? Yes. What? Right. Oh my god. I got it. I was Justin say Timberlake. Timberlake. That's crazy. No, Justin Timberlake. Yeah, he just graduated with his Doctor of Music. Oh, that's so cool. You did well. Berkeley How good? did you even know? No. Yeah, that's what? crazy. No. All right. And then our very last one is the best thing I've ever done. My greatest role in this life. Hashtag Happy Mother's Day. Kylie Jenner. <laughs> That's good. You guys are really good. Oh, you got it? Really got it. Nice. <laughs> I wasn't even nice. Yeah, so Kylie nice. Jenner. And did you see her post maybe like a few weeks ago for Travis's birthday? And she said, let's just muck around and have another kid. So she's very happy to be uh, a mother. Nice. Cool. Well, they got yeah. the money for it. So. I know. Yeah. If, I, if yeah. I was rich, I reckon I'd have a baby right now. No joke. I'd really? do it. Yeah, 100%. Who with? Anyone. 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 <laughs> 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 Well, you guys did really well. So that's all the tweets that we've got. Cool. All right. And as Shaz talked about, another big celebrity gossip thing that we've all encountered was by sister oh. James Charles. Yeah. The tea. I actually yes, did read up on this a one. lot of tea. So yeah. as Shaz said, um, there was heaps of controversy with James Charles and Tati, all of the boys that he's been with, all of that stuff. So yeah. what, what are your thoughts? Think? Mm, I don't know. Not sure. See, I've never I, been a big James Charles fan. Yeah, my sister's so into all the makeup he has, so I keep up with yeah. it a little bit. It seemed a little petty to me, but then when they started bringing out all the stuff about like the kind of sexual harassment mm. issues, I was yeah. like, eh. I know. I mean, look, but to lose that many followers one day. I reckon I, he's definitely holding a record right now. 110%. It's like a movement. I th to be honest, after hearing like the fine details, it's not like... The biggest scandal in no, the world. No, no. Like he's not necessarily. But it's I never just really because they've that both much, made but. that ins the YouTube video about like they're both like upset with each other and it's just like everybody loves beef. It's Who just like another beef? YouTube scandal. Yeah. I feel like this is like I don't know Tyler Oakley, but I don't know. It just I don't mm. know. It's just like PewDiePie. It's like PewDiePie. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he's not going to go away. I think he'll stay around. Yeah, yeah. he'll be here. But like I don't know. Anyway, because of. James Charles, we're going to do a little makeup challenge. Mm -hmm. So, Savannah, okay, you're in the power seat. You've got all the control. Nice. So, we've got some makeup for you. Cool. What we have to do, I'm going to give you one minute. I'll get my timer up on my phone. And you're going to have to recreate this look up here. Oh my gosh. Wow. So Are you ready? Look, yeah, you're going to look, look like that. pretty. Yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh, I'm all right. So, all right. I'm so I've, I've been like, you got to do your best. Lately, so. Both well, eyes, one anything. minute. It's all up. I know, I know, but I've been You're experimenting with the way I'm looking, her. and like I think this is gonna be really, really, I don't know, I'm just fun. Okay, I'll get my timer up. You have to do the best look that you can. Ready, set, go. Oh, okay. Shit. Uh, <laughs> Where do you first start? Conceal. Okay. Wait. Well, wait. So, so what okay. we want is our color in the eyes. So, so James had heaps of rainbow eyes. Start yeah. with some color. Okay, so you've got okay, okay. one minute. So you've got. 47 seconds left, so try to do as much as you One can. One minute for that look. We've Are really you done. mad woman? <laughs> I reckon you can do it. Have colour, colour, colour. That's all we need. So we're at 37 yeah. seconds. Come on. What do you got now? Put oh, green, green, on, green, on top, green on the top. Green on the top. Do you want me to help you? Is that green? Keep. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Okay, right. so we had <laughs> rainbow, rainbow <laughs> all over. Oh, my we're God. Now, we're going now. Like 20 seconds. Oh, 20 seconds. Is like green, a... red, blue. Any colours, any colours will kind of make Purple. it look like that. <laughs> okay, we're going to go some of this shit and we're going to like... Okay, you're coming down to the last 10 seconds. Come on, bring it home, bring it home. Bring it home. Nine, what eight, the hell have I done to myself? Six, 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 <laughs> like been punched in the face. Okay, Four, wait, we need some bright colours. We need some... Two, one, and, and yeah. stop. Okay, look straight into the camera. <laughs> Give us a little. Oh, yeah, that's cute. Okay, wait. Let me oh, let, let me do a spin. <laughs> oh, oh, that's beautiful, beautiful. I love it. <laughs> I'm so James more like Charles. A black. <laughs> Sorry, James. Sorry, sister. Bye, sister. Yeah. Bye, sister. Uh, well, thank you so much for playing with me. No, thanks yeah. for having us. Nice. Yeah. Loved it. Thank you very much for coming. I hope we'll see you next week, okay? I uh, hope so. I want if you two like minutes enough. at least to do. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> yeah, you can leave me next week. I have to go into my day like this. <laughs> That's okay. You look beautiful. But anyway. anyways, it looks like we are out of tea Would you for look today. at that? We're out of tea.
Make sure to follow us on our, all our social media. Our Instagram is super fun and run by our own Bridget here. So mm-hmm. definitely follow that. Watch us on Facebook and everything like that. But yeah. we'll see you guys next week. That's all.